Hi, my name is Jonathan Rotz, field agronomist for Pioneer. And today I just want to talk with you a little bit about uh, soil compaction. We're in spring season here now and everything's getting ready to go. We're out, you know, doing sprays, fertility, manure applications, all sorts of things. We'll get into spring forages here before long as well. And just a good time to review a little bit about compaction. One of the first things I always like to talk with guys about compaction is to really pay attention to the soil. So when we think about compaction, one of the first things to think about doing is going out and, and actually getting a little bit of soil. There's two different ways that we can look at compaction. One is the ball method, where we simply go and, and squeeze that ball. And if we can dent that ball without really having it crumble around, that soil is too wet to be on. The other would be the ribbon method, where you can, uh, you can push that over your fingers and if you come down two fingers this one's actually probably not going to work very well because there's a lot of root mass in here but try to get yourself a nice a nice sample and here where i see that i'm not really cracking apart as i make that ball of soil again a little wet to be working on obviously the reason i'm talking about wetness is wet wet soils increase our risk of compaction um, compaction is is a serious thing especially here in the spring when if we're in a no-till scenario especially maybe we're not going to have as much time to remediate um, or if we're we are in a tillage situation you know as we go through and get our tillage done if there's anything else we don't want to compact it uh, prior to planting or during planting one of the things to really understand about compaction is axle load so we talk a lot about flotation tires and, and all of those kind of things, which have a big play in compaction, but our flotation tires actually have a play on surface compaction. So the larger surface area we have on that, on that flotation tire or whatever else, the, the larger area or the less pounds per square inch we're placing on that soil, the less we're going to compact that surface. However, our deep compaction that goes down into our subsoil is actually based off of axle load. So even if we put a large flotation tire on a really heavy load, we can still compact deep even though we're not compacting the surface. Really when we look at greater than 10 tons per axle is where we start to get concerned about penetrating to that, that subsurface. And again, as we get into wet conditions and things like is fairly typical of springs, especially the last few, we have more of, a, uh, more of a chance of getting that compaction deep. Another thing to think about is that 80% of your compaction is found to be on your first pass. So this is why sometimes if we're you know, hauling manures or things like that, maybe making a path through a field where we go out and, and return on and just hitting that same path is going to be a better place. We are gonna create some severe compaction in those areas, but there's two things. Number one, we, we are, focusing that compaction in a small area, plus it's easier to re, uh, remediate down the road without having to remediate across the whole field. So that brings me to the idea of what do we do about compaction if we get it there? Well, light to moderate compaction, a lot of times we think about things like cover crops, um, freezing, thawing, things along those lines that are going to eliminate some of that moderate, uh, light to moderate compaction. However, serious compaction and deep compaction um, a lot of times we'll need some level of tillage. When we think about this, there's all sorts of tillages. Um, you know, we think back about the moldboard plow and, and I'm not a fan, obviously. And one of the things to think about when we think about tillage is how does that implement look across a plane? So for instance, if you think about a moldboard plow, when you look at, at, at that straight on, you can see a line across that whole plow that's going to be smearing as you come across. And that's where our plow pans and things like that get, get created. Discs actually, especially offset discs, tend to do the same thing. As we have those discs to the side and as we push them forward and move through, there's a lot of surface that is actually getting a piece of steel slid across it. There may be some gaps in the middle, but that surface still has a lot that gets slid across. And especially if you're in a wet condition, we can create a pan and we've seen disc pans as well. Some of our min till systems, you'll see when you look at that implement that there's a lot more space in between. So, you know, things, things along the line, when we think about like a, um, an old, 
old conventional or conservation tillage practice like a chisel plow when you look down that chisel plow there's open zones in between where even if you do end up getting some compaction from that application there's zones that weren't compacted as bad zone builders and things like that work on this same theory of having open areas between where you're going to fracture that soil but maybe it's not going to compact all along one last thing to think about on all of this stuff any of these times if we've got something that has a shank and you know a point on the end that we're engaging that soil and trying to do a lifting action with tillage not just a straight run through like our um our minimum till machines to think about having that point not lay flat across that soil as we go across but instead to have it pointed sometimes we have to adjust the implement whether it's the ride of the implement or actually even adjust that point on the end with uh, some you know machining or anything else to get that so that as it comes through it's actually lifting instead of just sliding across and smearing that again this all starts with just making sure it's we've got the right soil conditions when we're out there um, things like cover crops and stuff can help a lot as we're getting into this spring to to leave this stuff and allow that to help hold us up above but still um, trying to be on the best soil conditions possible will help us out Hopefully that provides some insight for you guys as you get into the spring here and start to getting to more field activity. Um, continue to stay safe and thanks for all that you do. Hopefully you get a lot out of your Pioneer products and some helpful information out of this. Have a great day. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.